We may once have called ourselves the Rainbow Nation, but in recent weeks, the cracks around race have been exposed yet again. In truth, many of us find the issue of race difficult to deal with, don't we? But not so for one family who continue to defy the stereotypes. In 1993, with the country on the threshold of its new democracy, Fluby and Tim's love story was seen as symbolic of the sweeping changes in the country at the time. We were flavor of the month because we were... Uh, to, in our group, we were reflecting that new South Africa that people were speaking about. I saw Tim as just a normal person, just a human being. It was, I didn't see color at all, because that is not how I, I, I was brought up. I'd like to make up a story and say how hard it was, how we struggled and fought off these racists and everything. Uh -huh. But actually, it wasn't really like that. Ruby's mom, Tami, who was a domestic worker, needed some convincing. Yo, I said, no, I'm not happy about it. He said, why? I said, you know what? I don't trust for a white man to marry my, my daughter. But Tim soon won her over, and the wedding went ahead. And then, as Tim says, you settled down and had children. It was very exciting. We were all looking forward to see this baby, how he's going to look, you know. It was amazing. When baby Lita was born, there was much celebration, but also some tough decisions. To circumcise or not to circumcise? That was the question faced by Tim and Fluby, whose cultures offered two very different and competing answers, at birth, in Tim's case, or in the teenage years, in Fluby's. Well, uh, that was our first cop-out as a relationship. We, one of our first major things that we had to decide. So we, we had a discussion, and uh, like, like all good politicians, not to be politicians, when we can't reach a decision today, we postpone it for a long time. <laughs> so we, we reached a compromise and we said, let Lita decide when he's an adult, when he's 18. As Lita grew up, he straddled two cultures and carved out his own identity. I never really wanted to be that person, are you black or are you white? Um, I've kind of just been myself. And, but I mean, if people ask me, I make a joke, I'm like, well, uh, today I feel like being black, so uh, that's what I'm going to do today. And then maybe tomorrow I'll be white. Lita spent a lot of time in the townships with his grandmother, and it was expected of him to go through with the traditional Kose initiation rites and circumcision. If he didn't, he'd always be considered a boy and not a man. They say, yeah, we'll be at Jumgidi when you turn 18, and uh, when are you going to the bush? And it's always been in my mind, so like, um, in terms of that culture and that tradition, it's always been there that I'm going to be going to the bush. Other boys that went to the bush, uh, they would be able to rest back and say, well, I haven't really got a choice. My father will never let me not go. Whereas I think we made things more difficult for Lita because we said, look, it's your choice. We'll support you whichever way. Yeah. You can pull out any time. But Lita kept to his resolve. He said to me, no, Makulu, I want to go in the bush. I said, yo, Lita, there's no white person who's going to the bush. I said, but Makulu, I'm going to the bush. This despite his girlfriend Amber's reservations. When he said he wanted to go, I was a bit like, why do you want to go? But um, I supported him. So the search began for an inkangata, or traditional doctor, to perform the operation safely. Our headlines in our province are full of young boys dying in this process of circumcision. Tembo Mondi says he was honored when they asked him to be both Inkangata and Umlibi, doctor and nurse. We are dealing with a, a, a person. We are dealing with a life. Yeah. You know, those boys, the leaders of tomorrow, you know, we must be careful when are doing this job. So in early December, they gathered and built an Iborma as a shelter for Lita on an uninhabited farm owned by the family. His father, Tim, helped him prepare on day one of the ritual. As custom demands, they shaved his head, stripped him naked, and dressed him in just a blanket as he waited for the surgeon to mark the beginning of the three-week ritual. I honestly, I never, I was never really nervous or scared. Tim was a different story. I said to, to Tim, I think uh, Lita is a little bit nervous. Tim said, no, I don't think Lita is nervous. It's me who's nervous. <laughs> The initiation rites are usually shrouded in secrecy, but Lita's family allowed our cameras to capture a rare insight into the traditional Kosa practice. Mtembu had performed the operation many times before, and he positioned Lita next to his Iborma. 
No anesthetic is given and using a short traditional spear, Ntembu deftly sliced off the foreskin. In a matter of seconds, it was all over. It was difficult, but it was enriching, enlivening. I felt alive doing it. Um, on the day that Lita was circumcised, I mean, I had to um, stand there and I had to watch my child being cut. It was difficult for me, it was heavy, but this is what we have to do, something that, that, that we've chosen to do that we've now got to carry through with. The first week is considered the most critical time. Apart from the pain and healing, Lita had to follow time-honored protocols. He's covered in clay, which according to folklore serves a double purpose, to keep him clean, as he's not allowed to wash, and to ward off snakes. For the first week, you have a blanket. That's all you have, the only possessions you have. And that's very difficult, also because the closet tradition is that your, your food intake is very limited at that stage. Basically, um, uh, dry food, boiled millies, and very little water. It's almost worse than the circumcision. Jeez, yeah, jeez, that was the worst part, the diet. Equally difficult for a modern teenager was having no smartphone or access to the outside world. His uncle, Luzuko Buyambo, volunteered to stay with his initiate nephew as a caretaker and to show him the ropes. I also told him from my experience, this is the way of life. This is, this is how you must act as a man. With Lazuko's guidance, Lita spent those first few days going through the traditional Tosa rituals, making a stick that he will carry with him into manhood for the rest of his life. He also found time to mull over why he found his father's heritage unappealing. Yeah, Dad, tell me about your answers and your tradition. And he goes, well, my answers are the Irish, and we found potatoes. And that was it. His healing happened fast, and on day eight, Lita was given a clean bill of health. To mark the occasion, the men of the family gathered, and in keeping with tradition, they slaughtered a goat. We are here today to eat some meat with Lita, because Lita today is able to eat meat for the first time in a week. He's able to have um, some salt with his meat. He's able to have something spicy, something tasty, and that's it. The two weeks that followed were more of a retreat, a time of self-reflection. If I have a son, I'll do the same that my parents did, and I'll leave the decision up to him. Because, I mean, look, I have a, a black mother, so I have the decision to either go the black way or the white way. And I'm like, I won't be like a black father to my child. I'm only half. He just looked so much more radiant, he looked so much more calm and wow. in control. Mm. And I think that simply had to do with, if I were asked to theorize, just the fact that there was a retreat. His time in the bush was soon over, and again the men gathered at his Iboma to complete the ritual. First they washed Lita and rubbed butter all over his body. Then they wrapped him in a new blanket, together with his helper, or Ikalati, who will journey home with him. He then turns his back on his Iboma as the men set it alight. Symbolically, as the, as the man leaves the bush, you burn this structure behind him, Iboma. You know, so he's symbol with all his clothes, so symbolically you, you're burning his childhood. After three weeks, Lita returned from the bush, having completed his rite of passage. One more ceremony awaited, after which his friends and family got together to eat, drink, sing and dance. The women waited on his street in Port Elizabeth's upmarket suburb of Walmer for Lita to arrive. To stand with that blanket and the women can't see you yet because you, you're not allowed to see the women until the men have said you can see the women and it's serious face. Prospect Road, hey, it was full of people and we were happy, dancing around. Say, uboile, uboile, unyadawe, tuboile. Ruby battled to contain herself and leapt into the air in delight, Amber recalls being very emotional. I remember I got so choked up, like I couldn't, I had to look away and my jaw was so sore afterwards from clenching, from trying not to cry. He was welcomed back as a man by the elders who put a lot of pressure on him. Lita! No! You have rich manhood now! You can be an example! of what we want of the children to come in this country. You can go anywhere now and say, 
After the civilities, Lita was taken to his room, where first his sister Mandisa and then his friends and girlfriend coated him in clay. It's the way the women welcome him back as a new man. What followed was probably one of the biggest parties Walmer has ever seen. 350 people joined in the celebration as Lita left his childhood behind him. Now that I am a father of a man, um, I'm, I'm a man in a way that I wasn't before. So it definitely was a big, uh, important chapter in our lives.